Yeah, and welcome, welcome, welcome once again. I'm Brett Papa with the great King of Kemper, Michael Britt. Also, just happens to have a real gig, Lone Star. Yeah. <laughs> They're both real gigs at this point now, though. Huh? Well, the actual Kemper business is my bigger gig now because really? we're off the road for Bro, at least right. three Duh. months and possibly six more months. So. You got, I mean, talk about a blessing in disguise. It's nice to have a side hustle. Yeah. yeah. And you get to stay at home. I do. Like, what am I going to do today? Hmm, another Kemper pack. I mean, I miss going on the road, but this <laughs> right. is actually. For so many years, I mean, literally, this is the longest I've been off the road since 1992. Holy, how many uh, gigs do you do a year? Uh, anywhere from 80, well, usually between six, 60 and 80, but uh, wow. this last year we picked up a little bit, but bef I mean, we were doing 300 shows a year for a while. I oh mean, it was like slammed. God. Over the years, we've kind of just, as we got families and all that, we limited yeah. it a little bit. So 100, year, 100 shows a year. Full, That's not counting travel days. Like you know? world all, all over the place? or Mostly U.S. now. Yeah. I mean, we've gone over to the U.K. a couple times. Yeah. been to Kuwait and Iraq a couple yeah. times. Um, Canada, we go up there twice a year probably. Wow. So, I mean, we do, but yeah. mostly you know U.S. stuff. What a trip. Yeah, Okay. But, uh, honestly, I haven't had more than six weeks off since I started playing full-time in a band. Yeah. 92. Wow, that's so, crazy. I know, it's crazy. So how much does your uh, roadie love you now that you have a Kemper rig? <laughs> um, well, my big rig's still in a big road case, but it's still, <laughs> I can set up my, my main rig in five minutes. Wow. I mean, so we pull a couple lids off, plug in a few cables, and that's it. Yeah. What, what's in your kind of self-contained. What's in your live rig that's different? I mean, and this, I'll, I'll show you guys here in a bit, but he has the, the floor version of yeah, the Kemper. Yeah, Kemper Which is cool. Stage. I didn't know they had that. That's yeah, they cool. just came out last year, I guess, or year nice. before. Now, um, does it do everything that the big one is? Yeah. Okay. It is. All right. So, live rig. Sorry. Yeah. So, they don't have anything. Uh, they don't have anything in the big one that I can't do on this. In yeah. fact, this has a couple features that aren't on the other one. So, are you going to take that one on the road, or is the other I could, one? I could if I wanted to really slim down. Yeah. And not, you know, if we had to shrink our footprint a little yeah. bit, I could do it with like no a fly problem. date or something. Yeah. Well, this is definitely what I use on fly date. So, um, I know Kemper has the kind of lunchbox looking version. Is there yeah. a rack? There's the rack mount version okay. too. So is that what you use on the road? I don't. I don't prefer the rack mounts. I prefer okay. the uh, toaster, toaster version. Why? The biggest reason is, without showing you the the big knobs on the bottom, the volume based middle treble okay. gain and all that stuff. Yeah. They have little LED lights around them on okay. the toaster. Right. But on the rack mount version to save space, they took those away. Oh, interesting. So when I'm on stage, I prefer right. the toaster um, because I want to be able to look at, like if I'm playing. Yeah. And listening too closely to what I'm playing, I think, oh, that sounds a little bright. Yeah. I can just look over at my toaster, and yeah. if I've got treble and presence EQ'd in it, yeah. I'll think, well, I need to turn that down. But yeah. Otherwise, if, I, if I'm if i on this or the rack, I have to go over there and turn the knob to see what it's set at. Right. I can just visually see if it's being boosted already. Yeah. So it's just little things like that. And then I'm, I'm getting old, so I need glasses. <laughs> and a lot You're middle-aged. Perfectly middle-aged. I won't wear glasses on stage sometimes. Right. So I can actually see that, and if I didn't have my glasses on, trying to turn the EQ knobs and see what those little <laughs> tiny LCD numbers are, like, right. I would never see it. So uh -huh. I like just being able to see where I'm turning. Yeah, they need to they need to have a monitor out. So yeah, you can put like a 19 inch screen. Thought about getting one of the old man little magnifying sheets. <laughs> you know, just put it there. That would be amazing. But um, so I use the toaster for that reason. So my main rig is a big rack, but I've got a, a toaster in it. The rack or the big Kemper toaster. Yeah. Um, got wireless antennas in it and wireless units on the bottom. Got two different ones depending on sometimes the 2.4 gigahertz is getting yeah. slammed. So I've got a 900 oh, that's right. megahertz wireless too. So it just depends on the venue. Right. We do so many casinos and that kind of thing. And a lot of them will use uh, the Wi Fi cameras all, yeah. all through the casino. So we'll get tons of interference on Wi Fi. Oh, dude. On 2.4. So I'll use my older wireless that they've gotten away from. See, look at you. And I go back and forth depending on which one's cleaner. Yeah. Day. Those are real road stories you never think about until it's too late. Yeah. But <laughs> I've, I've been a fan of the digital wireless ever since the X2 digital wireless back in the day. Uh, who makes that? Well, it's just a company called X2. Oh, okay. Line 6 ended up buying them out. Mm. And, or excuse me, X Wire. X-Wire was the original. Okay. Uh, Line 6 bought them out and became the X2. So oh, cool. One, I still use one of the X2 wirelesses. Yeah, the, I used one of those at a gig not too long ago. They were great. Yeah, and then they up, so that's the 900 megahertz range. Mm -hmm. The new relay systems are in the 2.4 gigahertz. Same exact stuff, it's just instead of using those frequencies, they use yeah. the 2.4. Right, less But it's use. all the same. There's no compression expansion because it's digital. Right. So basically they're converting your guitar tone into numbers and sending it. So there's no compression expansion, which changes your tone. Yeah. So the reason I've been a huge fan is I spend all this money on guitars and amps right. and then you go through a wireless and it, totally Lose it all. squishes everything. Right. 
<laughs> so I just try to use the, so I've just been using those for literally 20 years. No way. Everything from X, I went from X wire to X2 to relay. And, and yeah. now I'm using the X2 and the relay, depending on which is cleaner. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. And okay. Then, oh, and I've got a middle section in that big rack that has a, a tray of pedals. Yeah. And I've got a, a Voodoo Lab Hex, which is basically the interface between the Kemper and the pedals. Mm -hmm. It's a loop switcher. Oh, so because the, Kemp the Kemper only has one effects loop. Yeah. But if I want a bunch of different stuff and put them in different places, so I use the Strymon hex or the the hex. Yeah. Food drive hex. And I've got a Strymon flint for the mm -hmm. harmonic tremolo. Oh, so good. I've got a Dimension C chorus pedal in it. Is that one of the new ones or the older ones? I've got the new Waza. I've got you one like of the it? original ones, yeah. but it started crackling, so I got one of the new Waza. Uh -huh. It's great. Sounds just like the old. <sighs> Those ones. pedals are amazing. You know, it's so so funny. Like, I'll go back to um, Boss pedals, you know, because they just seem to be floating up here and there. Oh, yeah. It's like. What was ever wrong with this? In the, in the I, I've place. been a fan of that dimension pedal. Forever, yeah, forever, it's forever. fantastic. Well, and it's like, you know, it's funny. Everyone's on the boutique band train, but it's like so many of the sounds that you heard and really oh, yeah. like are those boss pedals. Oh, yeah. Even that big gray CE one that Annie Summers oh, used for all those his police so things. so good. You can't beat them. So good. And the boss vibrato, that dark blue vibrato. Pedal. Oh, everybody uses that in town. Too. The, um, XTS yeah. has a new uh, mod they do that. Yeah. Thing. It's freaking awesome. There's so many great pedals. And then a few game pedals. And so I can... I, the cool thing about the Kemper is it's got one effects loop, but you can put it wherever you want. You can put it before the amp section if I'm using game pedals. Right. Or I can put it after the amp section if I'm using mod type effects. So oh, that's I've got interesting. A, a TC Hall of Fame reverb mm -hmm. that I use just for, it's got an octoverb on it. Kind yeah. Of setting that I've tweaked in their tone print. And so I use that for the big washy kind of thing. Yeah. Now, Kemper now has, I did it before they came out with their new reverb suite. Right. With all their big fancy reverbs. Yeah. So I don't need it, need it, but yeah. I'm just so used to hearing that exact one that I right. leave it in the loop. Oh, good for you. So Check that's out. my big rig. And then this is just my fly rig. <laughs> Stripped down. Anything bit. you want. Oh, yeah. yeah. I got a big rig. You want to see it? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we're going to break down a couple of your songs. Yep. Uh, Amazed and What About Now? What About Now? And uh, we'll do that and then we'll talk some more tone stuff. Cool. All right. Let's get into it. Maestro, what are we doing? So this basic, you know, four chord country song from the nineties. What's <laughs> which is true, right? Yeah, same is. four chords. Yeah, it's fifteen but, uh, sixty-four. It's a super easy. Um, what are our? I chords? try to make it unique. Okay. You know, it's an E. It's in the key of E. Okay. Um, What's for the, go go through the chord progression? So the the intro of the song is it's a piano kind of thing, right. but he's keeping some droning notes happening. So okay. what I try to do is emulate or work with those droning notes. Yeah, so I keep these E and the B strings open up top. Okay. So my first chord is just this E, which is just three notes. You point at that one. Oh, I'm sorry. There you go. So E on the seventh fret, B on the ninth fret, and another E on the ninth fret, and uh -huh. everything else open. Okay. Guitar sounds great. Thank you. It's a it stays in tune better than I. Do. <laughs> so there's the first chord, and then it goes to the five chord, which is a B. Okay. And now since there's a bunch of just stuff ringing live, the way I do it live now is there's my five chord. It's a little bit of an E. It's almost like an E and a B together. Okay. Because you got so many E's and B's going on. But third chord is your six minor, which is C sharp minor, but I just play this. So that note, that note, that note, and then the rest open. Don't play the low E, of course. Okay. And then just A, two. Okay. A, and two. So that's the intro. Mm hmm. Uh, what are your little parts that you do? And then once the drums and everybody come in, I move to this little uh, signature lick thing. It's just, it's the whole thing is basically like you're sussing a B. Okay. So it's, let me play a little slower, but it's just, <laughs> I'm really just playing two strings. And that's kind of like your B2 with, okay. you know, so it's. So that's really my only intro lick. It was complicated when we heard the demo. Right. And as we're recording it, Dan Huff just had me simplify it and simplify it. So now it's just two notes. And yeah. Two. No pressure playing in front of Dan Huff either. You know, I learned so much from him. He was such a gracious guy to let me play on our own records. I know that sounds crazy, but you know, back then, I mean, producers, you know, they wanted their session yeah. super guy. I mean, when you got people like Buka Vac yeah. and Dan Huff, they they can play all that stuff yeah. faster than I could ever could. Right. But, you know, he was so 
nurturing to me is yeah. in that part of my career. Such and I learned so much from him, uh, just how to play, uh, economy, that's yeah. a big thing. So, Terrifying guitar player. He's so good. <laughs> hey, but he's just genuinely just a music freak. Yeah. He loves music. Yeah. And it, every, it just seeps out of him. It's great. I learned so much. He's awesome. Do you know he's left-handed? Me too. You play right-handed too? Yes! You and Dan Huff. God! Now if I could just play like Dan Huff. <laughs> <laughs> I All right. about it one day. He said, well, I do most of the work with my left That's hand. That's what anyway. I said too. So, yeah. Well, you know, when I was, uh, when I was young, my cousin uh, plays guitar, and I think he's left-handed too, and he said, just learn right-handed for the fact that it's you'll be able to find a guitar. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I was like, okay, and then he's like, and plus, you know, you're doing all your dexterity stuff over here yeah. nine times out of 10, so, you know, why not use your strong hand to do that? And I was like, yes, what he said. Now my guitar tech on the road is left-handed, but he flips everything upside down. He can play a right-handed guitar upside down. <sighs> not great. I mean, like Eric Gale he, he plays regularly left-handed, so, yeah. he, but he can play chords and play some I don't bits. see how they do that. I don't know. Eric it's, Gales does that, and I'm just like. yeah. It's cheating too, because like yeah. all those weird things you can pull down to get those well, killer bands. Doyle Bramhall third, the third does the same thing. So right. All your high notes are up there. It's just crazy. Oh man! All right, so let's break down the verse. So the verse um, chord progression for the verse is uh, one five four five. Okay, which so is E B A B. E B so A B. Uh, twice yeah um now i do these little signature bits in the in the verse okay so i'm adding the here i'll play the i'll play the background for you and you okay. show us okay. count me off one two three four Too early. Okay. That's right. <laughs> so that's the first half of the verse. Right. I do those little kind of policey kind of. Okay, break that down slow for us. So it's just you're playing this E, those bottom three notes of an E chord. Yeah. And, and then I'm just adding. Show them over there. <laughs> I'm just adding the F. I'm sorry, you. Yeah, right. I'm just adding this F sharp. Okay. And the next chord I go to B. Uh, Yeah. Okay, and that's literally the whole verse. That's the half the verse. Okay, what's and the other? And then I start going all journey on them. Oh, good for you. And I do these connecting. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Like right. a true Neil fan would. Do you like Neil Sean? I love him. I heard he moved to town. Did he really? Yeah, well, got a house, but it hasn't moved really? yet. The fire's happened or something. But I was so play the rhythm part and I'll show you where the okay. kind of goes. So this is the second half of the verse. Okay. One, two, three, four. Okay. Nice. Okay, show us, show us, break it down. So, when we recorded this, it was actually two different guitars playing it, but I have to play a, yeah. a composite of it, so yeah. I, I comp it together. And so, okay. on the record, it's two different parts. One's going, just like the first half of the right. verse, and then there's an overdub guitar going. Okay. So it's. It's just simple four chords, but it, yeah. just having those little bits, yeah. it's like a little ear candy bits that yeah. make, make the song. Moves the melody yeah. around. Yeah. Nice. Sweet. Well, so now we got a chorus, right? It's in the chorus. Okay. So chorus me. The, uh, you want to play it or talk? Well, let's tell them what the chords are first. Okay. The chords are uh, just like the intro. So it's E, B, C sharp, A. Okay. So you play one. it first and then we'll, we'll so it's combo. A, uh, what about now? <laughs> Nice. 
Okay, so you're doing any little tricky moves? So yes, on that on the chorus, I'll do these. Uh, now there's a piano lick that, or it's, it was actually done with like these percussion bells. So okay. Goes, I'll pick that up sometimes, All or right. sometimes I just let the piano do it. Okay. So I start from the very top of the chorus doing those little, uh, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So the chorus starts with. So I just right. do those, you know, little pickups and, you know, connectors. So if I'm in the E, mm -hmm. if I play it, sometimes I don't play the one on the low E because yeah. I'm just hitting the, I like that big quarter. Yeah, ring. right. Because when it's just me playing guitar live, I'll like, Yeah. Right. I'll, I'll pick up on the B one. And that one I'll kind of rake and just play, the, pick down the chord. Mm -hmm. Okay. I always just think, uh, they're kind of like counter melodies. The piano's doing a lot of the work. Yeah. Um, I'm just doing kind of like the counter melodies. So it's... Right. Even some of those, depends on the, if I'm singing, I'm singing on that song. So I'm kind of simplifying yeah, sometimes. I, how do people play and sing? I still like, well, I just try to do it here with my kids and I'm like, <laughs> so much respect. I'm just, I'm not a good singer, but I sing harmony fun. Right. I enjoy singing harmony. Yeah. But so when I'm singing, a lot of times I'll do my cheater chords. Oh, I, that's right. Show, show people chords. this. This is amazing. So I was, I was writing one time with a, a great songwriter in Nashville called Mark Sanders. Mark, okay. Mark D. Sanders. And we wrote a couple... He, he's written a couple of our hits, No News and Running Away With My Heart that I wrote with him. Okay. And while I was writing Run with, Running Away With My Heart, he started playing these chords like, what are you doing? Yeah. I've never, he was not just like monster guitar player, he was just songwriter, but yeah. he had these great ways of playing things, super simple, like yeah. economy. So his E chord that he would play, it didn't have any thirds, it's just ones and fives. Which sounds amazing. If it was in tune, it would, yeah. <laughs> so my guitar would not sing in tune. <laughs> So you're playing low E, fifth fret, no, I mean uh, fifth string, second fret, uh, third, fourth string, second fret, and then your third string, fourth fret, and okay. everything else is open. So there's your E chord, yeah. goes in tune. And then your B chord, you're only moving, so, and I'm barring the, these two notes. Yeah, with the first finger. And if I'm touching the G string, it's okay, because I'm playing it yeah. up here, so it kind of hides it. Right. Uh, your five chord is here, your B. You're still keeping these open. Okay. So just by adding my ring finger, mm -hmm. I'm going to... Show them over there. <laughs> just by adding... So here's the E. Just add the ring ring finger, third fret, fourth string. And then it's your five chord. Your sixth chord, you move that ring finger from your fourth string to your fifth string. This can stay where it was. Sometimes I'll move it just to get it out of the way. But okay. There's your six minor. So awesome. And then your A chord, you just take that finger off. Yeah. So I can play all four chords of the song with without hardly moving my hand. So I guess. That is so funny. I've never seen that before, but it's like. Of course, that makes yeah. total sense. <laughs> and then I realized it was Dave Matthew Band uh, Crash. Uh -huh. That's so he, like the I, one he, song he where he has do normal that. chords. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, it's it, it's really kind of eye opening once you realize because that that three minor or that six minor I just love. Yeah. Yeah, it's a cool version of it. Yeah. And you're one over three, so if you want to play an E chord over your uh, G sharp. Yeah. And you're only this close to your two minor. Your F sharp minor is just. Yeah. And the uh -huh. rest open. It's almost a cool, you know, usually the, when there's two guitar players, one guy will play low and another guy will play high, but that, those inversions almost make it. So you can play in the same spot and still be cool. A lot of times I don't have a rhythm guitar player live, so yeah. I'm just trying to, kind of like uh, Alex Lyson from Rush does yeah. it. He'll play these chords. And... Yeah. 
because those droning notes add that complexity to the chord, so it sounds like two guitar players. Yeah, playing. fills a lot um, of space. So when you are the only guitar player in a band, it's kind of nice to have those upper strings just ringing. No pressure. Anybody hears it, it's you. It's that guy right there. That's the, when you're playing simple chord <laughs> structures like that, you kind of have to do things to make them, A, not boring, yeah. but just to kind of give them a little flavor and stuff. Well, you know, and you're super fortunate, too, to have a keyboard guy, too, Absolutely. which is so nice. And he's he's got such a strong way of playing that yeah. I kind of noodle around him sometimes. Or mm -hmm. we've, we've played together so long, we almost can tell what each other's going to do. So if I'm, if he knows when I'm going to do a little connector lick or whatever, yeah. and I know it. Sometimes we'll play the exact same thing without even talking about That's it. That's so know? funny. We'll be working up a new song, it's like, Oh, that was funny. Yeah. You know, because we just know how each other plays. Right, right. That's awesome. So, uh, are there any solo or anything? Or There is not. There's a bridge. Okay, what's the bridge? Um, the bridge starts on a C chord, so it's... So it takes your C chord from yeah. that shape, and then just moves Love it up two frets to get that D. Keeps your G string ringing, which is that, that's the rub, because mm -hmm. you're, you're getting those two together. Yeah. So it's a... It's a G over B. Okay. So their first four chords are that C to that D with the mm -hmm. funny note. And then G. It's a G chord, but you're really listening to this note. Okay. I try to listen to the melody, so it's... Then it goes to A minor. Okay. Which is not normally what you'd hear in the key of E. Right, yeah, yeah. But it gives you that nice little A minor. Mm -hmm. And Some then, drama. And then it resolves to the B, which is your five chord, and that's how it gets you back, to, back into your song. So do me a favor, play the last round of the chorus into, is it go from the chorus to that, or how, what's the progression Yeah, it goes to a breakdown chorus. Uh, so in the song, does it go, does that come after a verse or, or a chorus? And after a chorus. Okay. And it just hangs on the E after the chorus, so it's, uh, what about now? Uh, uh, Right. And then it goes into... And I, do, I go back to the intro figure yeah. for the breakdown chorus. Country breakdown. Country breakdown. <laughs> well, so it's awesome. kind of cool to have that... Um, and there's also in the there's a little movement in the in the A minor to B. Okay. Um, can you play those chords with me? So a minor to B. So just play the bridge. C. So, so it's yeah C to a D to a G over B. G over B with them. So, okay. So it's here. Yep. And then to. That's it. And then to here. And then walk down to the A minor. And then B. B. All right. So all, all normal lengths. Yeah. One, two, three, four. those little in, in internal air. chord <laughs> movements. I just love those internal chords. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's, love, that's love the plug. song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We're going to teach one more. One more. Yes, but we're going to pause for this important commercial announcement. <laughs> so about your camper packs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're coming out with a new one? Is that I just came out with a new one. It's called the what? 2020 pack. I named it after the wonderful year we're having. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, but it's got some really great amps. I, I picked up a uh, 68 Plexi, my dream oh. amp. I've always, I've got a 72 Marshall that I've used a bunch and, and profiled a bunch. And then I just happened to fall into this amp. Um, I was profiling amps for a guy and he said, hey, I've got a Plexi, would you mind profiling it? Mm -hmm. And uh, 
my profile. I was like, oh my God, this is great. He goes, well, it's for sale. No. Yeah. He used to belong to Eric Johnson. Oh, come it's on. It's in his 28 gear, 2018 gear video rundown thing. And so I was like, holy crap, this is a great sounding line. Yeah. It is sweet. Hopefully it left some Eric Johnson in there for you. Well, I can't play like him at all, but the, the <laughs> Can anybody? Are, well, <laughs> Doug Rappaport doesn't. Oh, dude, good dude, I want to get him on the channel so <laughs> bad. That guy, yeah. if you guys don't know who Doug Rappaport is, do yeah. yourself a favor, look him up. He's terrifying. And he does uh, Warren Demartini Wednesdays. Really? Which I'm a huge rat oh, junkie. God, and he just nails that the stuff. isolated track they just, somebody posted recently of the uh, round and round isolated guitar track. Oh yeah, it's, it's so phenomenal. Good. It's so, so good. good. You, you take for granted those guys in the 80s were so good and then they were running around like maniacs on stage. Well, he did so many of those internal chord moves, you know, in that song. It's yeah. just great little partial chords and mm -hmm. really melodic. Oh, so good. But Doug's scary. He can do all that, you know. <sighs> he can do Van Halen like yeah, nobody's he's, business he's too. He's scary. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not worthy. Exactly. I'm playing so, four chords. Uh, what else? So, so I got that. Uh, I've got that amp. I've got um, what else is in there? I've got a Tweed Deluxe that I really like. Oh, um, nice! Just one of the hand wired reissues. Yeah, but it's, it's a really good one. Um, you do any cabs or anything different? Or? I my ears probably changed since I'm yeah. off the road quite a bit. So uh -huh. to me, this pack is a tiny bit brighter because I'm doing it all at lower volume. Yeah, and volume has so much of an impact on tone. Oh, for sure. I don't sure. think you realize it, but yeah. like especially with modelers with real amps, they kind of adjust themselves in a way because yep. the room kind of takes it up but mm -hmm. with modelers uh if you tweak everything at a low volume and then you turn it up the high end gets louder faster yeah it's the whole uh interesting fletcher munson effect oh gazoon tight yeah um <laughs> it's just they're they take less energy so they just get louder quicker mm -hmm. uh low frequencies take more oomph. so do you dial it back well, on the new ones, or I just, well, I think I just probably tweaked them at a slightly lower volume, so mm -hmm. they're a tiny bit brighter. They work great for recording, yeah, because that's the problem with a lot of my profiles that people have is if they're listening to profiles that have been made to play really loud at a low volume, they sound right. muddy because yeah, I've tweaked them to sound great at this level, yeah. And uh, disclaimer, disclaimer, yeah, <laughs> you can make them. You, that's the cool thing about the camper. You got EQ and you can fix any of them, yeah. But it's just your starting point is different, right? Um, all that's on your website? Yeah. I'll leave a little link down yeah. below. Make sure you check Embrick. that out. com, and it's the 2020 pack is my new one. Camper I've been King. running a sale for two months now because I don't like, I don't want to charge full price while everybody's kind of out of work. Right. So I've been running a big sale, so. Mm-hmm. Now, word on the street, you may, uh, Maybe able to hire you to help with Kemper profiles. Well, I may. I've, I've, I've thought about doing some consulting, some online yes. consulting. Let us know in the comments below. You yeah, want yeah. consulting? If, if you need that, um, I've had a lot of email requests for mm -hmm. it and more lately. So okay. I'm just trying to figure out the way to do it. Yeah. The whole structure of it, and technology, mm -hmm. and all that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. But there, that we we're we were talking. About I got it. some ideas. <laughs> So I hope to have that up and running in a month or so. Okay, cool. Well, we're gonna get into the other song in just a second. So, I mean, you don't need me on this one. I'm just gonna sit here with the guitar so I don't look out of place. <laughs> <laughs> this is our biggest song, Amazed. Okay. And it's not a hard song. Okay. It's literally the same four chords in different, I mean, it's the same four chords, same order, but it's in three different keys That's throughout amazing. the song. That's amazing. So <laughs> it's the same four chords as the What About Now intro. It's the 1564 we call it here in Nashville. Okay, number, 1564. Number it means your uh, one chord is your first chord. So I, we do a lot of songs in weird keys. Okay. I say weird, not just E, A, D, G, yeah. you know, those open keys. Dang keyboard players. So this is in G sharp. The right. song starts in G sharp. Okay. Um, capo on the first fret. Capo obviously. first fret. So I have one guitar live that just always stays capo first fret. Okay. Because we've got songs in B flat. We've got songs in E flat. Um, Marty there's an E flat. No news is in B flat. Right. It's funny. Almost every one of our biggest hits that was number one is in a capo key Interesting. or a capo guitar. Okay. So I keep one guitar just totally. There you go. There's your now secret. I, I have tuned things down or up. Excuse me. I've tuned it up a half step. Okay. The problem becomes I get used to playing it and looking at the dots where I'm playing that. Right. And then we'll go to an acoustic gig uh, and I don't right. have a guitar that I can tune. Right. I don't want to retune it. So yeah. I just throw a capo on it. And now I'm playing everything half step off when I go up the neck. Uh, my brain's not good. I have to just, I get, well, yeah. when you play the same songs over and over, you just get yeah. muscle memory and exactly. wrote. But you don't. Anyway, so that's why I use a capo. And okay. Just, not just retuning. It. Right. So, Amaze, it starts in the key of G. Now, the first chord of the song, I don't see many people catching it, but you're, okay. I'm adding the A note right here. So on the first G chord, it's... Ooh. 
Okay. And then the second time you strum it, it goes back to the open G. Okay. So it's just a. To me, that's what makes the yeah. that intro is the steel. Okay. And then the the chord is just or the first verse is just strummy. And on the record, it's acoustic. Okay. And I don't want to switch back and forth live, so I just strum electric live. Okay. I just put it on clean tone and. Okay, what are your, what are your little, wa- little uh, tweener chords things you Tweener doing? things? So if I'm in the G, sometimes I'll hammer on that B note. Or I'm just right, counting right. the capo, yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. So it's really kind of basic yeah. and simple stuff. Okay. And then uh, I'll, I'll suss that, that okay. which leads me into that B minor 7, because I've already got that mm-hmm. moving. So. And then to get from the E minor seven to the C, I lift off this note. Okay. So I'm walking down from. Got it. So you just hear these internal kind of movements. Yeah. Okay. And that was just. Oh, show them over there. Sorry. <laughs> So C chord, I'm just hammering on that uh, that note there. So that's all the first verse. Okay. There's a channel section that goes into the chorus, and the channel changes keys. Same chord progression, but in a different key now. Interesting. So we started in G, or G sharp, actually. Now we're going to move up to B. Okay. And the first, and these chords have uh, the suspended twos or add twos, whatever you want to call them. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's in B, but with that that note on it. Okay. And then F sharp. And then here's your six minor. And we kind of walk through that to get to this. So it's. So any of these A-shaped chords, I'll use that that two. Okay. Next. Now when I'm playing it live, um, since there's a scene change on the record, scene change, um, the electric guitar comes in with a chorus on it. So that's why I kind of differentiate between. What's a scene change? You know, like you're going from an acoustic bit to having an oh, electric guitar. Okay. Electric guitar comes in. It just sounds different. Yeah. And so I'll throw in on the chorus on that. Ooh. Now on that chord, I'll, 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 the band's playing this six minor, mm-hmm. but I kind of go back to the first one chord. Okay. Those notes mm-hmm. just work over Yeah. It. And then. Nice. And that's just a little channel going into the chorus. What, uh, is that one of your profiles you got? There? It's just a, it's the built-in choruses in the Kemper. I, really? It's actually two different choruses. Um, one is, the vintage chorus, and the other is the hyper chorus. So I've got the hyper chorus after the amp section and the vintage chorus. What, what are those supposed to be, do you know? So the vintage chorus is kind of like a CE1. Uh, it's, it's really kind of slow, or I keep it set kind of slow. Yeah. The hyper chorus is like multiple voices, almost a little bit more like the Dimension C. Mm-hmm. So you blend them together. The, each one by itself doesn't do enough to me. Yeah. Because I love that Dimension C chorus, but it's pretty rich and complex. Yeah. This is my way of cheating. My, yeah. My workaround. That was this cool thing about those, um, what were they called? The tri choruses back in the oh, 80s. Oh, yeah. That's too? what Dan oh, used on the record, actually. So, so good. that's, Dan had a rack and he yeah. did the chorus y stuff on the record, but yeah. he used his tri chorus. <sighs> So good. And uh, um, I saw, uh, it was it Michael Thompson? There, there used to be all these chorus sounds. So I was like, how are they doing that? Yeah. And Michael Thompson <laughs> finally broke down one of his, and it was like a chorus, but they also used the um, HS3000 to do like a weird that pitch detuning. Thing. I'm yeah, like, yeah. there it is. That's yeah. the one, you know, it's so, I love the 80s. I saw for that. one with, was it Michael? Uh, oh, what's his name? Which guy? I don't know. What, Lando? No. Um, like a session guy? Or? Yeah, session guy. 
Anyway, he was showing how he used that H3000 yeah. uh, detuned pitch thing that everybody was using back yeah, then. Yeah, it's it probably was, Thompson. That, yeah, yeah. That is, it yeah, was yeah. Michael Thompson. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. In his uh, in his room of just yes. chaos. Yes, <laughs> with his weird guitars. <laughs> so good, though. That's what that, yeah, that plus or minus five cents. Yeah. Or Crazy. So good. So this is my emulation of that, just running two courses. Okay, so that's, uh, so that's verse. That's the scene one. change yeah. verse still? Um, or what was that? That's the B section or B section. channel. We okay. the different names for it. So you got the, the strummy verse and then you got the, the B section. Okay. And then it goes into the chorus where it changes keys again. All right. So still, I mean, so we start in G sharp. There's your four chords in the mm -hmm. verse and then for the channel or the B section. Okay. Same. same yeah. If, if you're just charting it, it's the same four yeah. chords, you just write a different verse. Now the chorus starts on uh, C sharp. We play it in C because we're capoed up. So it's, well, there's your one, there's your uh, five, mm -hmm. six minor. So it's basically you're fingering C's, G, A minor, and F. Okay. So that's the chorus. Everything that you do, so long with you, just keeps getting better. So, mm -hmm. Wait, so give us, give us a, can you go through each section just back to back to back? Yeah, so it's. do it but you know that's the so yeah. this is the chord that ends the b section going into the chorus uh -huh. yet it also ends the chorus going back into the uh, it's just crazy the way that all kind of works out I, i've never yeah i mean sometimes I, I get modulation like well they'll use a five chord to get back into you or know go up a you know third yeah piece, but right yeah that's was it was somebody in the band that wrote it that way or no the, the three writers that wrote it um and this is they were said they were listening to a, a Brian Adams song before they wrote this, just kind of as inspiration. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Can I went you go back wrong to, there? <laughs> I went back to listen to the Brian Adams song, and they do a very similar. They don't do it identical, but they yeah. do the same kind of key change kind of yeah. thing. Talk about that. That's one band, and I, my kids love them, which is great. But what's amazing is you go back and listen, and it's maybe a couple of guitars. Songs are super simple. Guitar is amazing. But it's like everything is for the song, you know what I mean? And everything just has its perfect place. And like that that's a great um, example. You know what I was also listening to lately too that, that's like that, but the rhythm's a little bit more complex, but still really cool is Huey Lewis stuff. Oh, yeah. Go back and listen to it. And it's like, man, all these parts are so good. Or uh, Mellencamp stuff. Yeah. Or just really that era of that 80s era guitar players. Because you had rhythm as hooks. Yeah. It wasn't, you're just not just playing. Uh, now everything is just swells and mm -hmm. you know all these soundscapes. Yeah. Back then, the rhythm, the actual rhythm you were playing was the hook. Yeah. You know, so just, good. Um, Some of that Huey stuff, I was like, wow, that's awesome. I was learning this. It's the wrong key, but. Yeah. Yeah. But. Um, yeah. I mean, it's just four chords, but man, it just, it's, that makes the song. Yeah, totally it's just, does. And it's simple, but it, God, it's so Well, and then Keith Scott's guitar playing doesn't oh, help yeah. either. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> all right, dude. So that's, oh, that's wait, all I got I an idea. We wait. didn't do a solo. Okay. Oh, yeah. We didn't do a solo. <laughs> so the solo is the only section that's different chords. Okay. Um, uh, I got to figure out 
Mario gets into it. So it does go back to the original key at the end of that chorus. Okay. So it's um, everything that you do, maybe amazed by you. So it resolves into the initial key. Okay. And then so the the chords on the solo are from the capo position. It's actually a B, but you're playing a B flat to C sharp to G sharp, and then B flat, which is actually B F sharp. And then you're sus in this uh, C sharp. So it's kind of hard to call them something because I'm I think of them in ways of just regular chords, not where they actually are. So it's Okay, you want to try it? Yeah. One, two, three. Simple. Okay, let's four, hear it. Let's see. Bars. It. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I was trying to figure out what to play on it. And I'd done so many solos that day. You know, we booked session time with Dan, and mm -hmm. he's like, "We're just gonna knock out some solos." So this was probably like the third solo I did that day, and yeah. my brain was just kind of like, "I, what should I do here?" Yeah. And uh, Dan just said, he hummed me this melody. Yeah. And so I did it, and then he ended up adding strings to that solo. Oh, nice. So once we did that, you know, he added some strings to it. So it just sounds big and Cause dr he can. dramatic because he can. <laughs> Um, and it's not in a position I would normally do. Like if you're in, you don't normally. But I tried doing it here. Right. That's where I would normally play it, but yeah. it just sounded interesting. Uh -huh. Sounds it's, thick. I, I do vibratos differently depending on if, if it's my index finger or if it's my third finger. Right. Um, I don't know if you do the same yeah, thing, yeah. but uh -huh. like yep. I'll do the wrist swivel vibrato there. Mm -hmm. And I'll do the, I don't know, I just, I just do different yeah. vibratos. Yeah. Different. But anyway, and it starts off with a little, and that's an exact note. I'm playing this note there. Oh, okay. So I've played the chorus thing, uh, the, excuse me, the solo section. Okay. One, two, three. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> you want me to come in on four? Um, sure. Where, where do I come in on? Uh, it starts off. So okay. you can start on that G sharp if you want. Okay. One, two, three. Now on the record, I actually punched, because this is before Pro Tools. Yeah. I actually punched it. Maybe it was Pro Tools. Yeah. Um, I, I played a slide. Oh, cool. But I never did it live. I've never yeah. done that live. But, uh, so this note, he punched me right on this note, and I went. Oh, cool. So I just. Yeah. But that was all, that was slide on the record. But okay. I never, live, I just. Uh, yeah. Sometimes I'll just either hold that or. Okay. Pull off to the open. Okay. Well, do that, do it all slow. It's not fancy. Short and sweet. Short and sweet. Uh -huh. It's it's you know it's a melodic little piece. Just like a ballad should. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you don't want to like you know yeah. you know, ripping solo. When people are di dancing to their weddings, <laughs> big guitar solos don't count anymore. <laughs> Woo! Triple yeah, bars. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Awesome, dude. Yeah. Well, uh, how about do you have Kemper packs that are for your songs? I should. I've actually thought about just taking my live performances and putting those Dude, in the pack. Yeah. But I don't know how many people want to be playing Lone Star songs anyway. <laughs> Let them know. Do you want the, uh, the Lone Star Kimber pack? I have pack ideas. Live and I just set? never know if they're good ideas. So. You know what I, I say to that? What's Post that? a video. And find um, out. They'll let you know right away whether they like <laughs> the idea or not. <laughs> Well, thanks for coming by. Thank you. It was thanks awesome. I'd, I'd love to have you by more often if you're up for Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Now that we're close. You're not far away. <laughs> All right. Make sure to click his links down below. I'll leave a bunch of stuff in the description box below. I'll leave your profiles, your website. Is everything on just your website? Yeah, mbrit.com. And, and I'll usually 
I have a blog section that okay. shows up in today or in the news thing. But uh, anytime I come up with something new, like if I do start doing mm -hmm. consulting and stuff, I'll put that on there. Nice. So any, any of my new stuff, and you can sign up for my, my mailing list, and okay. and you'll learn that way too. Because ah. I always send out e blasts when I do yeah. something new. Okay, so prod them into uh, consulting <laughs> and uh, Lone Star packs. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do it. All right, man. Thanks for coming by. Thanks. Have a good one.